We're going to continue with their meeting. And we have Mr. Chan. Do, Madam Chair, members of the board, we have Bentley Chan with the last presentation of the uh, of today, and that is water and sewer expansions. And he's going to give you a little bit of a historical overview, and then get into a new uh, proposal that uh, we'd like to for you to consider. So, Bentley. Thank you, Mr. Manager, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Chief Trina. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so I do feel compelled uh, since uh, we are all talking about uh, taglines and um, ours is uh, in public utilities. Uh, your number two is our number one. <laughs> um, so, uh, and uh, Tanya, if you're listening, you may not want to do spirit fingers unless you have gloves for that one. <laughs> So, um, on the topic of water and uh, sewer uh, expansions, um, I want to bring you back uh, to um, a year ago, October, late October, where uh, we were informed um, uh, very abruptly of uh, some uh, trouble in the uh, uh, Chickahominy River and subsequently the uh, White Oak Swamp. And um, uh, this board and, and the manager uh, moved very quickly to uh, help residents and uh, help people in our community uh, with those issues. And uh, you may remember uh, the gentleman uh, in, in these pictures, uh, Ryan Smeltz and uh, Thomas Mead, who actually did uh, win some awards uh, for uh, their efforts in uh, assisting residents in sampling and testing their uh, private drinking water wells. And so all told, and uh, you've uh, seen this map before, uh, all told uh, within five months, uh, we were able to uh, sample and test uh, approximately uh, 280 uh, wells and uh, found that uh, 83 percent of them, 231 uh, to be exact, uh, did not have an issue, were non-detect, and um, about 47 had some level of detection under the uh, previous, um, under the previous uh, health advisory limits, and then two were uh, over the uh, previous health advisory limits, and uh, we worked um, uh, pretty closely, and this is a uh, this is a new thing. Um, we work pretty closely with uh, emergency management uh, to install uh, activated carbon uh, filter systems uh, at two of those properties. We uh, last week uh, went back and did the resample. So once we get the, um, the results of those, uh, we have a third one that, uh, that we want to do to, um, uh, to assist these uh, residents with uh, either the high numbers or, uh, or concerns. And the one uh, that is uh, in front of you is the system at um, 5435 Charles City Road that uh, cost us uh, about uh, $4,500 uh, to put in. So uh, not, um, uh, not expensive and uh, really something that uh, we were able to coordinate with uh, emergency management to, to do for the, uh, for the benefit of the owner. And uh, so that brings me to the uh, to the next point, uh, which Madam, is. Madam um, Chair, may I, may I, Bentley? Oh, yes, sir. You just made a statement that scares me. You said this system cost what? It's uh, forty five hundred dollars. And it's not expensive. Yes, sir. To us. Yes, sir. But to a resident, that is could be a life changing cost. Yes, and so I, that slipped by, right? Mm -hmm. which I understand with that needs to be taken notice. We're moving forward, helping the citizens with something that they, many of them couldn't help themselves with. Right. Yes, sir. And it is, um, uh, and, and you are correct, um, uh, very expensive uh, uh, to a homeowner, which is uh, why uh, we are stepping in to, uh, to assist them. And I'm very glad you asked uh, uh, that question and pointed it out uh, because it really brings us into uh, the next piece of what we're talking about. Oh, well, thank you. Um, but I, I, I wanted to ask, this is, is this the PFAS um, chemicals that are in water? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the ones that the, the Federal Aviation Administration required the airport to have, and then the EPA years later turns around and says, you can't use it, <laughs> you Correct. shouldn't have used it, bad. One, one hand requires it and the other one says, you shouldn't have done it. So, I mean, I just want everybody to know the federal government 
They, they, they're obviously not talking to each other, <laughs> the different departments. That's just a personal comment, that having been on the airport commission and hearing that, that they had to use it, they were required to use it, and then they turned around and within, you know, years, but then suddenly you get these phone calls that say, you know, you've got to come check all these wells. So I'm sorry, but I just had to say that. <laughs> Two branches of government that didn't talk well, to each other. Well, so on that, <laughs> just, um, and this is for the board, I think I sent a letter last week, was it the week before, Carrie, to the board? Yes, sir. So there was a letter that we signed with the EPA. This was just another example. Um, can you touch on that? Because I think it gets to your point, Mr. Brandon, where, you know, just because you call out, you call out what's right, you call out what's wrong. So. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Manager, Madam Chair, and members of the board. So this um, PFOS issue from October is actually one of three issues that the EPA, quite honestly, has surprised us with and has given us little to no time to prepare. So Bentley just kind of outlined what um, that situation was most recently. Um, there is a, a new chemical that they are, uh, or emission that they're very concerned about. The acronym is ETO. And so basically they, um, the EPA was singling in on 23 locations throughout the nation based on projections and assumptions, not based on actual monitoring data. And uh, basically fear-mongered individuals that lived around that area <clears throat> of those facilities. And unfortunately, one of those facilities is, is, is in the Verina District, just like the PFOS issue, the first PFOS issue. So then about two weeks later, we get notified that the EPA is once again going to do another PFOS testing initiative. However, this has nothing to do with any facility related in Henrico. It has to do with the DuPont facility in Chesterfield. So um, the DEQ and the county manager signed a joint letter to the Region 3 administrator, um, who I, I believe is located in Pennsylvania. Um, it's like the, the, the top individual responsible for the East Coast, outlining our great concern about their lack of uh, proper risk communication regarding environmental issues. Because as you just heard from Bentley, we didn't hesitate. We weren't gonna wait three months for VDH and, and DEQ to identify funding. We did it immediately. But however, what it seems to be is the EPA likes to talk a lot and not to act, which is not in line with our mission. So that's why the manager signed the letter with the DEQ. And we are in lockstep with the DEQ as well, which is interesting because they're actually the delegated authority for the EPA to enforce their regulations. So it's a pretty entering interesting situation where we're trying to advocate on behalf of the Verina residents. Thank you. Um. Welcome to alphabet soup <laughs> with all the acronyms, but okay, I'm sorry I didn't oh, interrupt. Oh, no, no. But. Um, so uh, speaking about um, the availability of resources and uh, expertise uh, uh, within this, uh, this county, um, in front of you, uh, there is the map um, of the county and all of the well systems, uh, the drinking uh, water well systems uh, within the county. And there's uh, 6,412 uh, uh, total wells uh, in the county uh, that uh, feed off of uh, groundwater. And, um, and you're, I, I guess, from uh, the Virginia Department of Health's uh, perspective, uh, you're supposed to get uh, testing every year. Uh, but the, uh, to the average resident, uh, you may not have the ability to do that or you may not have the expertise uh, to understand um, or be able to identify uh, the information that is, uh, that is coming back to you. And uh, so everything in blue is, um, everything in blue and green is out there. Everything in green is uh, what we've already sampled and tested. Um, but what I wanted to, um, what I wanted to propose and uh, bring forth uh, to the board was that we provide water quality testing on our own system. Um, we do, um, uh, we do ongoing testing, um, and Mrs. O'Bannon, as uh, we've talked about um, recently, um, at strategic locations um, uh, every month, 150 locations uh, every month uh, uh, throughout the year. And then we do, um, uh, 
we, we do ongoing testing of the water that's actually coming out of the plant. And so for any resident who um, is uh, uh, public, uti uh, public utilities uh, customer, uh, you can call in and uh, have the water uh, at your tap uh, tested if you um, uh, have any concerns. And we do about a dozen of those um, every month, uh, so about 120, 150 a year. And it's a, a fairly robust uh, program uh, where uh, we have our lab analysts uh, who do the testing and then uh, the information rolls back to an engineer who uh, provides a report and speaks uh, to uh, the homeowner uh, about um, what they see, what concerns uh, there are. And uh, so what we're proposing is doing that, uh, but for well water uh, across the county. And uh, this would be a voluntary program and as needed. So uh, you could call in and, um, and request uh, your well water uh, be tested uh, through us. We would use a combination of our uh, internal staff and uh, external labs. Uh, to get that, um, uh, get that tested and uh, provide you uh, with that information. And now the benefits of that are, uh, again, you would be utilizing the county's expertise in, in water quality and we would have an ongoing uh, bank uh, uh, of data that uh, we could use to strategically look at um, uh, issues in the county and proactively uh, address them. And so this actually kind of wraps up the first part of my uh, presentation today, and I, um, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Any questions? That sounds like a good idea. I mean, just on its face, even when you say proactive, excellent. Any questions? Just a okay. clarification, Bentley, this is a uh, similar program to where someone calls and asks? Yes, sir. Please continue. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we'll do an update on, next on um, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act uh, projects uh, that uh, the board um, authorized 64 million in uh, federal funding uh, for water and sewer uh, infill programs. And so the pictures uh, that you see in front of you are the uh, Rock Springs, River Run Drive, uh, Woodbrook, um, area where we are uh, extending water and uh, hopefully we'll be able to take off uh, take offline uh, 34 uh, well systems. Uh, uh, we kicked off this project in uh, May of this year and hope to be done by the end of uh, 2023. And uh, so overall uh, with these ARPA projects, um, we're helping about 800 uh, properties with, uh, with either well their well system or their, um, or their septic system. And uh, it's 800 uh, properties across uh, 29 projects, which we have uh, 13 in progress right now. What kind of um, savings, Bentley, is that? So if you have a well and then you, so that's what you're saying, right? Yes, sir. Residents who have wells and then they move to suit water and sewer. What kind of savings is that for the resident? So we're estimating about uh, ten to twenty thousand um, dollars in the both the extension cost and the uh, connection fees, uh, which we are helping to uh, to cover. The really the only thing for the uh, for the homeowner to do is to coordinate with a plumber to connect their house, uh, take the well or the septic system or both offline, and uh, connect to our system. And uh, we do have uh, we are working on a a county contract where a homeowner could utilize uh, contract prices uh, to get that done. How much is that? I mean, what's the estimate for that? That's about uh, like five, seven thousand dollars to do. You also have the uh, impact of um, public utilities will have a positive impact on the v assessed value of the home. Right. So that could be 10, 15 percent. The, uh, the, I, I, the sunset on the uh, using the ARPA funds is the end of 2026, and um, uh, we are working very, very quickly to make sure that um, all of the, uh, the 29 projects uh, are completed by then. 
So just a, um, uh, just a little update on uh, some of the very various projects that we had uh, presented uh, in, um, in previous uh, meetings. Um, in the uh, Brooklyn district, uh, we are looking at uh, 460 septic systems that uh, could be taken offline. Uh, we have, again, the Rock Springs um, project that is a water project uh, that will be done in 2023. We also have uh, Greenwood Estates, also water by 2024, as well as the Old Washington Highway, Long Meadow, and uh, O Old Washington Highway and Longmeadow uh, sewer projects, and then the Greenwood wa uh, Water, Greenwood Road Water Project by 2024, and then Greenwood Sewer uh, by 2025. Um, that doesn't capture all of the projects that are happening, but uh, they are the ones that are uh, currently in progress. Um, in Verina, uh, we uh, previously showed the a Hanover Road Graves Road project that uh, will take offline uh, 10 septic systems. Um, this project has begun and we estimate that it will be uh, complete by mid-2024. Uh, in the um, uh, Fairfield uh, District, uh, the uh, Croydon Road uh, project uh, with uh, 44 uh, septic systems and uh, one church uh, that needs uh, utility service. Uh, that will be done by the end of 2024 and uh, has uh, recently uh, started as of uh, this, uh, this summer. And then on to uh, three chop, uh, 45 septic systems, two private pump stations. Uh, the two projects that we have kicked off, uh, the West Ridge um, uh, uh, sewer, uh, uh, the sewer extension uh, by the end of uh, 2025, and the big uh, Tuckahoe Creek um, uh, transmission main uh, by the end of 2026. And then the last, um, I'm sure uh, everybody knows about uh, Druin Hills, um, 60 septic systems uh, by the end of uh, 2026, and uh, we have uh, recently uh, kicked off this uh, this project at the uh, beginning of October. Um, before I move into um, uh, economic uh, development and uh, redevelopment um, uh, strategies, uh, I will want to stop for any questions that there may be. Are there any questions? Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Continue. Um, so on the subject of uh, water and uh, sewer uh, expansions and making sure that services uh, that are water and sewer services are provided uh, to the entirety uh, of the county, um, we are looking at uh, economic development uh, as well as uh, redevelopment. And so the pictures um, uh, that you see in front of you uh, on the left, uh, Facebook, as well as on the right, uh, you have Green City. Uh, so at uh, Facebook, uh, we are uh, public utilities and uh, general government uh, are investing uh, $12 million to provide uh, two water booster pump stations, one at Portuguese Road and one at Old Williamsburg Road, and uh, about 13,000 feet of, of water main. Uh, to help with uh, both redundancy and uh, flow and pressure uh, to, um, uh, to the White Oak area. Uh, the added benefit of that is that it will provide us the ability to start serving, uh, start serving some of the properties uh, in, the, uh, in the White Oak area. Um, on the other side, uh, Green City, uh, we are working on the Magellan uh, Parkway uh, water extension. Uh, to also provide pressure and flow to the uh, Green City uh, project, uh, as well as a pilot project uh, for advanced metering infrastructure. And uh, so, uh, as you know, uh, currently our, our meters are radio red. We drive the truck down the, um, down the street and uh, get the readings, uh, but this is uh, uh, cloud-based and uh, it has little cellular units 
in, uh, in each of the, uh, in the meters. And so all of that information is uh, sent up real time and uh, can be accessed in real time uh, by the customer. And so we are piloting that uh, at uh, Green City. So, um, so this is uh, this is actually a map of um, uh, what we're doing in the uh, White Oak uh, Technology uh, Park area with the two booster uh, pump stations and the uh, the 30,000 uh, feet of, of water main uh, to increase uh, pressure and flow in the area, as well as uh, look to serve um, uh, uh, properties in the um, in the also in the area. So that brings us uh, to uh, redevelopment, where uh, we have the uh, where we have the Westwood project, uh, as well as uh, Virginia Center Commons. And at at Westwood, uh, we are investing about fifteen million dollars uh, to provide infrastructure uh, so that uh, this area um, can redevelop redevelop as uh, urban mixed use. And then at uh, Virginia Center, uh, we are uh, utilizing um, our expertise uh, to provide uh, master planning for water and sewer, as well as uh, abandonment and uh, demolition of existing um, uh, water and sewer. And uh, so, what what I wanted to um, what what I wanted to mention uh, was that for every uh, for every dollar that uh, the county invests in water and sewer infrastructure, uh, the county gets uh, the same amount in credit. And so those credits can be used, like you know, uh, against uh, connection fees. And so any investment uh, from the general fund into projects, uh, both development and redevelopment, yields those credits that, the, uh, uh, that the, uh, the manager and the board can elect to use in, um, in bringing, uh, bringing uh, uh, prospects uh, to, to the county, as well as uh, to help offset uh, existing businesses uh, that uh, want to expand or uh, want to move into uh, different areas uh, of the county. So it's a technical thing, members of the board, but it's a very important, very powerful tool. Um, we get credits when we build, um, I think it was a middle school that we got a number, Elko Middle School, we got a number of credits for because we ran that extension so far. But what Bentley is talking about as, and think about general fund dollars going for utility extensions. And we generate credits that can then be utilized for economic development projects or other public projects. So it is, a, it is a tool that he has brought forward that, and you'll see in this proposal, I, I certainly hope you see how powerful it can be over time. Yes. Who, who, who decides the credits? When you say credits, what exactly They're is calculated. it? Go ahead. So they are calculated uh, based off of the construction cost okay. of, the, uh, of the infrastructure. <laughs> and so we are working with uh, Mr. Newby's uh, office in figuring out how those credits uh, can be, so those credits are already rolled back to general government, um, but we are working on uh, the, uh, the plan so that they can be authorized uh, for use uh, by the manager and by the board for, uh, for the uses that you see fit. And who, who decided on the credits? I mean, who is in charge of the credits? That's what I'm trying to understand. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the, the Department of Public Utilities. The uh, Department of Public Utilities yeah. gives credits to the, okay, thank you. And we give it to any developer who, who makes a significant extension to, uh, to serve their project. Now I understand. Now I understand, thank you. And uh, so I did want to point out a couple of other projects. Uh, where this uh, is, uh, is useful and uh, can be uh, more useful. Uh, so in front of you, uh, you see the, uh, the Innsbruck uh, area, and then on the, um, on the right, you see the, uh, the Regency Square uh, redevelopment. Uh, so at Innsbruck, uh, we are putting in 13,000 feet of 48-inch uh, uh, trunk sewer, uh, as well as um, 
uh, uh, upgrading our Rudy Branch uh, pump station, all for 40 million. And so you figure that uh, whatever the construction costs within that full 40 million is, uh, the county would uh, get that in credit uh, to be used to offset connection fees. And so at Regency, um, I believe in the next couple of weeks, uh, you'll see a, um, a board paper uh, come forth uh, for us to upgrade uh, the sanitary sewer in Farmington Drive, uh, which will help support not only Regency, but further redevelopment uh, in the area. And uh, so that's at a cost of about 15 million, but uh, uh, general government is helping with that and it will earn credits. And so the, um, This is uh, just a map of uh, some of the redevelopment areas that have been identified. Uh, but I will also say that uh, we've been working closely with um, uh, economic development uh, to identify other industrial sites uh, like we had talked about um, uh, this morning with, uh, with Mr. Emerson uh, that are available that can be shovel ready uh, with the infrastructure we put in uh, because that will give us a leg up on any prospects uh, that uh, economic de development prospects uh, that we are looking for. And uh, that brings me to the summary, uh, which uh, the manager, uh, with the manager's um, uh, proposed uh, FY 2024 uh, budget, um, he is saying that um, uh, to put aside uh, one cent on the existing tax rate, uh, which equals about $5 million to be used to, um, to further these efforts to uh, expand the water and sewer uh, infrastructure system. So I think we've, we've had some general conversations, or I've had general conversations with members of the board, but this is intended to be in the uh, proposed budget. I've not done this before, but it really, it, and what the reason we're able to do this is because of the 60 plus million dollars in ARPA funding that came about. So that, that took care of a lot of the, the infill that we had. So we can keep going uh, with this and it's flexible enough to where the intent is to, um, uh, you can use it for infill, you can use it for economic development, but $5 million a year will generate um, is a significant sum. It's a penny of your real estate tax rate. And we have the ability of doing it because we continue to have strong revenue variances with the way that uh, Mr. Crawford puts, uh, puts our budget together. And again, the uh, benefits being making uh, targeted sites, uh, uh, targeted economic development sites uh, shovel ready uh, and exp not only expanding the water, water and sewer system for economic development, but to benefit uh, residents. And uh, again, you, uh, you're able to bank uh, those water and sewer credits and use them as incentives. And uh, with that, um, I'll ha be happy to answer uh, any further questions that you may have. Any questions from members of the board? Well, I've got one. So, mm -hmm. Bentley, I want to thank you and your team for, for reviewing this past year the, uh, the sewer infrastructure throughout the Innsbruck area because that became quite a concern. So thank you for you guys doing that. And the upgrade for Innsbruck we've been working on for eight years? Thereabouts, sir, yes. 